you can see here the northern palace entrance stay away this is original this is not you can see the difference and we enter into the northern palace which you already know that it's like three different palaces that was built on the cliff show off show off show off Hmm. A wonderful view of the palace, of the storerooms from here. And you can see a little bit of the Dead Sea. <coughs> the Dead Sea is now dying. Um, we're losing one and a half meter. Let's say four feet every year. And you can see the uh, Roman bath, another tower that survived. Beautiful, isn't it? I'm almost alone here. This is the northern part of the Dead Sea. It's difficult to see because it's a little bit, uh, it's not foggy, it's dusty. There are days that you can reach here and you can see every house in Jordan. This is the northern palace. It's not big. You must understand that he didn't live here for years. He was here for like two, two weeks, three weeks a month, uh, a year. Where we are, right here. I believe that you're gonna see soon the room of King Herod. This is a replica of Augustus Caesar, the Caesar from his time. And we know that Augustus actually stayed in that room. Uh, bed his bedroom was here, but look at the beautiful balcony. The stairs to go all the way down to another pavilion around palace, mainly for business. Uh, the one I will enter here where will be only the important people, but important people is one thing, and business is second thing. If you won't sign the contrast, I believe that you will go all the way, all the way is down, baby. Um, there were shelves here, and some people actually thought about library. I must tell you, we are talking about wine and food. Why? Because there's no reason to read here. If you want to read, you can read in your room. And the visitors, the important visitors, actually slept down there, far away from his room. Someone might kill me, I must protect myself. They had their own um, Roman bath. Remember the one that he saw was only for himself. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful rooms, but now we are entering to his room. Yes, I know, I know. You will tell me immediately, oh, it's such a small place. You're right, but um, it, it doesn't need a closet. I mean, there are servants for that. Then his room is actually divided to two. The entrance and his bedroom is, let's say, a table, uh, a bed, and I'm sure that you can actually have here a nice window as well. But look at the mosaic floor. It's boring. It's really boring. Why? He's King Herod. He knows how to deal with mosaics floor. He loves colors. But this is totally Jewish strict mosaic. No figures. You shall have you shall have no figures, no statues. And here it is. Remember, God saved him from the enemies. 
save this family. Mm. All right, let's go to the balcony. And we already know why he built it at the northern part and not at the southern part. At the northern part, always sunny. Can you see the shade? Northern part. There's so many things to see here. Let's start with the three um, palaces. Here we are at the upper one, the middle one, the round one. It's so strange to be here alone. And the lower one is for the visitors. 11 stories building. It's difficult to see it from here because it just looks like, a, all right, two minutes and, and I'm there, but it's totally not. It's actually really, really, really difficult to climb up. Another, no, it's not the best view day, but something like 10 miles from here, you're supposed to see a green area. This is a national reserve of En Gedi, and there's a lot of fresh water there. Lots of fresh water there. When the Romans came to here to, to, make, to build a siege wall, All around, I don't know if you can see it. Oh, you can see the, you can see down. There's um army camp, and you can see the siege wall, and you can understand that there are soldiers who actually goes from one place to another, and if someone is not reaching uh, his um, camp in less than 15 minutes, they know that something happened to him, and then all the soldiers will be there. I'm not sure that someone succeeded. Um, to um, enter to this place. They, um, I mean, to cross those walls, it's like three meters wall, nine feet wall, and there are a lot of towers on the way, and, and eight army camps. Not easy to, to escape from here. Uh, then the Romans had to go all the way to Engedi, 10 miles, 16, 17 kilometers from here, to get fresh water. While the Jews here, remember the second story, not King Herod's story, 70 years after King Herod, could enjoy lots of water and lots of um, food. We talked about the storerooms, but let me tell you that um, some of the products weren't kosher. For example, example the wine wasn't kosher, um, the fish sauce wasn't kosher, um, then in that case, when the zealots, when the Jews came, they came to here later on, they had double kosher food. Really, really double kosher that some of us believe that some of the priests uh, actually found themselves here. Because they had to eat special food that was blessed in the Jewish temple. Oh, I don't know, can you see the birds? Oh, now they are in the lower part. Those are tree stumps. We will find them uh, soon, as I believe. It's a special, uh, a special bird that you can find here. And look at that. The second biggest army camp is here. And the Silva, the commander of, of, uh, of, of uh, the Roman commander of uh, uh, the um, army camp here, and we are talking about a league, the 10th league, it's, it's something like 12,000 people and a lot of uh, uh, slaves, he was there. Then I believe that they came from the desert. Remember, it's so difficult to reach Misada from the sea. Now it's not a problem. There's a road now and we are losing the sea. Then, then, um, then in that case, it's easier. And I reached that place from there. The first picture that or the first uh, uh, video that I took, the beginning of it was from, uh, from that side. Then in that matter, um, they just enjoy water here. And the, Zero, I mean the, the Romans had to go all the way to Engedi and to even to Jericho, which is, uh, let's say, it took me 40 minutes from Jericho to here. Then, yeah, not so easy. Then how, how did you deal with the water and actually how King Herod deal with the water? We will talk it soon. Don't worry. We will talk about it. Um... Another thing that it's very important for me to tell you 
a year before the destruction, a few years before the destruction, at um, Passover Eve, Easter Eve for the Christians, um, some of the Jews from here went to En Gedi and killed 700 people there. Jews killed Jews in there. Um, it's the main reason is is that the Jews there had a special orchard of a fossilmon that was one of the most important um, plants to create the Chanel 5 of ancient time. That part was owned by the Romans and even Cleopatra used it. Even the Dead Sea wasn't part of, of King Herod because they used all the minerals. The Romans used it, not King Herod. Then in that case, the Jews went there, killed 700 people, including children and women, and came with those plants. It was kind of a diamond at that time. And one of the re reasons, the Romans went all the way to Miss, from Jerusalem to here, and it took them, let's say that the Jewish uh, temple had been destroyed 70 AD, then it took them four years, three between three or four years to came to here, to come here with lots of soldiers. And here we had a little bit less than 1,000 people um, to conquer that place. One of the reasons, we must show it to the, um, we must show it to the uh, world that we are actually dealing with every one who are against us. But we believe now that the main reason that they reached here was for the Afasamon as well, for the plants, for the secret. At the synagogue of En Gedi, um, there's a beautiful mosaic floor, beautiful, not so beautiful, but there's a list of things not to do. One of them is, I said, uh, if you will tell the secret of, of the Afasamon to someone else, God will punish you and your family. Then in that case, that was a mystic. And, and, and the first one, although we wanted to believe that was part of their uh, income, which was true, it wasn't, they didn't own it. The royal family owned it, the Romans. Then they just worked for them. Just like King Herod wasn't the real king. He was the puppet king. And the world king, Rex, wasn't the best Roman word, because the first Romans that been uh, in Rome and created Rome were kings, but they were awful kings. And then the Republic became to be uh, the uh, continuation of Rome. No more tyrants. Now it's only Caesars. That, let's face it, became uh, became to be tyrant and even gods. Then the word Rex. Hmm. Lower, Rex Horror, Herod. We're entering to the big uh, Roman bath, the large bathhouse, and it's already 43 minutes. If you're still with me, write it for me. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna upload that video as it is, as one long uh, video and later on if you will ask me i will cut it into special videos then you will have a little the bathhouse video the palaces video whatever something like that then just tell me that a roman bath wasn't just for fun it was for more fun uh, people came to here not only to take a bath People came to here to uh, gossip, some exercise, and then to use the aroma bath while you are talking and drinking wine and resting. Then it was more than that. Then that yard was only the entrance of it. And let's continue with it. Remember the black line? What is benefit? That's how it used to be. What is above it, renovation, but with the same stones here. Uh, Misada was never destroyed 
uh, by an enemy. From time to time, the earth is shaking here. Then that is the result, and you know, 2,000 years. Um, do a lot. Hey, you can see me. Hello, me. Hello, you. When you are entering to a Roman bath, you must be clean. You cannot be stinky. Roman bath, a Roman bath is not really for uh, cleaning your body. You have to be clean before that. Then usually there's a pool here, but this is a special pool. This is a mikveh, a Jewish ritual bath built by King Herod. Then it shows you that here he saw himself as 100% Jew except of the non-kosher food. Jews are purifying themselves a lot, not their body, not their soul. To purify the soul, the soul, their soul, they are praying and, uh, and talking, asking forgiveness. Same pattern of uh, the um, uh, mosaic floor. And look at that, sewage canal, because it's involved with a lot of water and a lot of uh, steam. And we don't have water here, it's a desert. Then in that matter, um, now you're entering into the room and there's a locker room. Look like every room. You can see the colors all around it. And you can see the pattern of the floor, the tiles. And guess what? Opposite killer. This is something that he loved. It's actually imitated a uh, Roman floor as well. You, can, you could find it in, some, in, in, in the Jewish temple, for example. And here you can find it too. The bunches that you see here are not from his time. You can see that it was made with a, with a little bit of cement and uh, clay and some of the um, columns that they found here. The Jews use it as a mikveh, big mikveh, and before that, they built here another pool, but that's to clean um, the feet of their, that they won't be stinky. I, I looked at it and said, oh, it's mainly for the children. That's as a child. Remember, I was here for the first time when I was five years old. They didn't care about um, the colors. They cared about surviving. And you can see that we found here a lot. You can see the black line. Mm, let me take a picture of it for you. Uh, the pictures will go. Uh, I will uh, upload it to YouTube, uh, sorry, to Facebook and to Instagram. Both links are in my description almost of every video, and especially that video. But if you want to find it and you want it, just write me and um, a message and I will send it to you. This is the, kind of the midway to the cold pool. You know, after 10 minutes in the hot room, you're jumping into here and then you can hear the pss of your body. But this is another mikve that was built by King Herod mainly for himself, uh, and it is as a pool, a uh, cold pool, and now a mikveh needs water, running water, um, not running water, water from, um, from rain. Um, and the roof is actually collecting the water, and some of them entering through here, it's called the treasure, and touching the water itself, and then the water became pure. King Aaron did it. Yeah. Now you can ask me again, is he a Jew or not? You know the answer. He was everything. But here he was a Jew. And this is the hot tub. The main room, the most important one. You can see the hypocaust. Some of clay columns. Not so high. It actually will divide us from um, the floor that we are now uh, walking on, that wall, the floor, it looks actually like that. And let me go backward because the best picture is backward, but you have to be careful. 
because the exit is not so big, not so high. And just a moment, see that? There's another shape like that in my head. Then when you are climbing up backward, I'm begging you to be careful. Then let me take a picture of that room before someone will enter. Although, as you saw, there's not a lot of someone's here. Then, out here, enter through the gap of the floor and through the gap of, of the walls. Even the walls have like two layers. And if you look at that, it's a replica made by the Italians uh, for us. Looks like that. And hot hair enter through the oven, which needs a lot of water and lots of wood. And that's it. This is a hot tub. Um, one more thing. To enter to the hot tub at that time, um, you have to wear shoes, mainly wooden shoes. If not, it's too hot. If you wanted to steam the room, then a little bit of water on the floor will steam it. And uh, we believe that he had kind of a pool um, bath here that he could actually enjoy himself. Remember, it's himself for himself. Now, what will happen if a drop of water will enter, will fall on the head of King Herod? I think you know what will happen. The one, um, the um, servant that will be next to him will die. And to avoid it, they build that kind of um, ceiling. Then the water will go all the way straight to the gap between the walls and straight outside. Here it will be dry. Nice, isn't it? This is one of the most beautiful uh, Roman baths that I found in the world, and I love to travel at Europe, to uh, travel at Roman places in Europe. It's not the biggest one, but it's actually almost saved like that. You can, uh, you can feel it, you can feel it. Are we going out from the, um, from there? Yeah, it's not the end of the, storeroom and we already wow almost one hour is it too much please say no please say no i could be here for hours I won't do that it's uh friday and because um you honor me by supporting me and i rented a car uh, I will want to go to two more places that I wish that I will be able to do that than to show you more of it. The servants were here, the oven were there. Look at the beautiful stones that they use and like in the secondary use. Um, amazing. That is secondary use. I mean, they, they use it as, as, as a mikveh and, and a Roman bath as well as uh, the juice, but. Uh, and someone has to keep it like that. And we're talking about uh, lots of wood. Can you see trees here? Can you see wooden roof? No, no, you cannot. Oh, here it is. But this is more than one. Let's continue. Some storerooms that they didn't excavate yet. A lot of mystery there. I want to be like a mice that can enter through the holes to find so many things that we didn't, we don't know yet.